Middle school teachers, what is the craziest thing you've seen a student do? Story 1. Director of Technology here. I don't really have much to do with the kids at the school I work at, but I definitely have a cringe moment. Called down to the middle school from my office to debug a problem for a teacher. The classrooms in this building all have two doors. One door opens into the building hallways. The other opens to the outside. My office is across a field from the middle school, so I decide to just cut across the field and enter the side door to the classroom instead of going all the way around the field and entering the classroom from the hallway. There in mind that these outside doors are almost never used by anyone except for an occasional fire drill. I open the door and step in to see a room full of students facing away from me and towards their teacher. The student closest to me scrambles to click X on a browser, but not before I see full on hardcore. Yoi Hentai. Did I mention I work at a Christian private school? She turns bright red and with visibly trembling hands, she closes her laptop lid. I burst out laughing, which interrupted the class. The teacher looks to me in questioning confusion, and the student stare in silence. I casually walked over her and said loudly, enough for the classroom to hear. Let's not look at memes and Facebook jokes at school, guys. Her flesh red face contorted with fear, suddenly relaxed, her trembling, hands stilled. I laughed again and went and debugged the wireless access point issue I was called down for. No point getting her expelled over hormonal changes in curiosity. Story 2 Valentine's Day and a boy brings a girl a dozen roses. They were both in my homeroom, so I watched this all go down right in front of me. I had literally never seen these have a conversation before either. Girl didn't know what to do with roses at 7 a.m., so she threw the roses in the trash can literally 20 seconds after it happened and went on her merry way. The boy never found out. Story 3 we had this one kid in our 8th grade class stick his entire hand in a cake that was being passed around for a party, grab a chunk and started eating it like a Neanderthal. It was chocolate and his face was covered. When he finished his chunk of cake with everyone looking in disgust, he then proceeded to lick every finger. It was torture watching. He also ended up being the kid that threatened to blow up the school at the end of the year. Though, my god, I had a kid carve his own name in his desk but he couldn't figure out how we caught him. Strange, isn't it? Story 4. Around the 8th grade dance season, they call it prom, there was a whole lot of crunchiness roaming the halls. One popular tactic among the boys was explained to me. We ask the girl to prom and then we run away so she can't say no. Story 5. I caught the student on Google, search attempting to look me up. He spelled my name wrong, and my name is very common, so I wasn't worried. I sent him home, since it was an after-school, homework club, and then went through the rest of the history, which included boobs, naked women, Megan Fox nudes, and Megan Fox pennies. One of the other students in the class kind of picked up on what was happening, and mentioned that he has also been kicked out of the public library for similar reasons. Story 6 a more innocent story. I was fixing the little girl next door laptop. She shouldn't have a laptop and her grandmother doesn't monitor anything she does because she doesn't know computers. I decided to peek in her computer history since she was 7 or 8 at the time. I was curious what kids her age did on the computer. Most of it was super spammy sites but then I found a collection of how to prank call and what is Miley Cyrus phone number. I was amused. Story 7 there was always this kid that would go up to guys, shake their hands and deeply sniff their necks. One day a teacher asked why he did this to guys, and all he said was, if I dated a girl, it would be weird. Story 8 I once offered a boy a My Little Pony color by number sheet, ran out of Super Mario. The boy's response, Mr. I'm not gay, I'm a lesbian, I like girls. I mean, to his credit, he's not wrong, but he is incorrect. Story 9 I was demonstrating convection, which included burning some newspaper. One kid piped up with them. That smells like incest. He meant incense. There were too young to get it, but I nearly died trying not to laugh. Story 10. My husband teaches English at a middle school. He brought some creative writing assignments home to grade. And since I'm an assistant teacher for much younger humans, kindergarten, he drafted me into helping him sort through the mess and grade them. We've made good progress through the stack when I pick up a paper that had a kiss mark near the name and lipstick. Okay, 
that's odd, but I'm used to working with kids who are only just figuring out bathroom habits. A little lipstick on a report is hardly weird in my book. Plus middle school. Then I see the name. Hun, who is R, has been without missing a beat. R is this goth kid who looks like a rainbow. Grew up on him after having marathon. Screwing with the unicorn. I look back at the kiss mark. Glitter lipstick. Nice shade choice if the kid is going for goth pale. I read his creative writing assignment. I get up halfway through to go pour myself some more wine. It's an extremely well-written gay story featuring my husband and another teacher at the school. This kid is going places. I don't know what those places are, but he's going places. Story 11. I had a student who would constantly butt into people's conversations, and when they asked him to mind his own business, he'd stand up and proclaim, nobody likes me, everyone thinks I'm so annoying haha, -ha. and he'd laugh while everyone awkwardly stared at him. Another kid literally told me one time that he would just act annoying so that he can impress a certain group of boys. They were not impressed. Well, at least that first kid is honest with himself. Story 12. I had a 6th grader lick a book. He definitely tried to keep it on the DL. So we looked around, made sure no one was looking in his direction, and then licked the book. It was a tongue poke, then a full out lick off the spine of the book. Story 13. I had a classmate who had to give a presentation using PowerPoint. So there's a computer hooked up to a projector that is pointed at the screen that fills the wall. This guy sticks his USB with his presentation in the computer and it automatically loads the images he had on it in a gallery. He had a folder full of pictures of girls from his class here downloaded from Facebook. That was kind of awkward. Story 14 my mom is a middle school English teacher. Once a student snuck a bar of soap into her class, but ate and proceeded to run out of the classroom and start vomiting. Apparently he did it to impress his friends. Story 15. One of the kids responded to questions like Pikachu. Shame that a good kid is going to look back on those days with absolute horror. Story 16. Not a student in particular, but a whole bunch of them. I was a substitute teacher for a few years in my university breaks, but last January was the worst middle school day I've ever had. Eighth grade science class. I asked the kids to open their textbooks and work on the assignment. A girl shyly raises her hand and says, Miss, there's something inappropriate in my book. Of course, some kid you remember. I call me, tell her to erase it and move on. Three more kids say the same thing. I say, if you have something inappropriate in your book, please Please just erase it. Every kid starts whining about how there's members in their books since they won't shut up about it. I take the offending books and replace them with different books from the back of the room. Every single book had a huge member drawn in it. All 90-something of them. Crudely drawn members, artistic members, Squidward screwing, Spongebob, you name it, it was there. The kids rioted. I almost quit. Story 17 I taught fourth grade last year, and I had a student who was 12 years old, middle school age, held back a few years. She always did very odd things to try to impress her classmates, but they were relatively tame until there was a line in the bathroom, and she took her pants off, squatted over the trash, and peed. Four or five girls came running out of the bathroom and told on her. Story 18 I once confiscated what I first thought was a note being passed in class, but turned out to be a gay fanfic. One of my students wrote pairing two of her classmates. Story 19. Had an 8th grade girl pretend to pass out because she was upset. She got written up for screaming that another girl was a freaking jerk in the middle of a science lesson. Then got upset when that other girl didn't also get in trouble for looking at a wrong in the dean's office. She was so upset that she pretended to faint, complete with back of the palm to the forehead and dramatic exhale, and then lay it on the floor until we were forced to call an ambulance. Before the ambulance came, mom walked in. She worked right across the street and said, Dang it, Jennifer, we're not doing this again. So evidently, this was a regular happening around their house. At this point, the girl squinted her eyes open but refused to actually get up. When the squad got there, they checked her vitals and basically knew she was fine. They had to take her because we can't take chances with this stuff in schools. We all just kind of looked at each other and shrugged. So, yeah, that was crunchy. Story 20 I will relay a short story that my 7th grade bio teacher told us. In that class we dissected a cow eyeball. The year before us, a student pocketed the lens of the eye. Looks like a yellowish hard thing. About the size of a peanut tem and dem. In his next class, he stood up and swallowed it. In front of everyone, another teacher told me about a student he had who would come to school in different costumes. Ninja soldier, 
etc., and stay in character the whole day. I do not remember the details, but there was an incident in which he threw throwing stars during a talent show. Story 21 in sixth grade science class, our teacher asked if anyone knew what the arms of an octopus were called, and this kid immediately raised his hand and blurted out testicles. Everyone was laughing, including the teacher, who also snorted. His face was so red. Story 22. Kid more close to school, with the price tag sticking out. When asked why, I was informed that this was to let everyone know he was wearing new clothes. I thought this was going to end with the kid having stolen them. Story 23. I work for a private school. At this point, that's really all you have to say. This middle schooler recently started dating another one. The girl decided to come to school in a black leather mini skirt and black leather tank top combo at recess, which I watched because it's a small school. She was dancing all around in front of her boyfriend and hanging off the fence, a law stripper. It was hilarious and so cringe. Story 24 one student wanted to ask me if I had a doppelganger. What he actually said was, do you have a dingleberry? I also had a girl ask me what food stamps were, which isn't surprising because the district is very affluent. I explained, but she's still seeing confused. So she asked what it means to blow a trucker for food stamps. Evidently, she was reading a book meant for a more mature audience and her worldly knowledge hadn't caught up to her reading level yet. Story 25. I organized an activity that was sort of like, never have I ever, but positive and meant to build empathy. Basically, a student would say, you're in my boat if, and whatever they say, that is the same as you. You have to stand up and find another chair. Great activity. One of the girls, who I often found puzzling, because she just did and said things that were nonsensical, started her period and got blood all over multiple chairs. Some kids start looking at the seats and have no idea what's going on. The girls in the class figure it out, but don't say anything. They just avoid said tainted chairs. The boys, however, are as dumb as a box of rocks and are touching it and sitting in the seats. I'm sitting there horrified since, one, that's disgusting, two, I didn't initially know who was pulling a carry. 3. How the heck do I nonchalantly stop the activity to get this biohazard cleaned up and no one really notices? After a short observation of the students, I noticed that the one girl was the unfortunate cause of all this. I told her that she was to do a favor for me and I stepped outside. I asked her if she knew that she started her period and she said yes. I sent her to the office and then went back in the room for damage control. I honestly don't know how I concocted a magical excuse, but I told all the kids that we were invited to go to the library for silent reading time but had to go now because all the good squishy seats would be taken if they didn't hustle. They believe me and I sent them down there. A few girls stayed behind. I figured out what happened and I told them I knew and sent them as well. I finally got on the phone and informed the unfortunate janitor about the bloodbath in my room. Story 26 the students spend an entire semester speaking in a Russian accent for an experiment. No one questioned him. First day back from winter break, he is back to talking normal. We were all incredibly confused, and his parents ended up going to the superintendent about our school, allowing bullying. Story 27 I teach history and let my students do a PowerPoint presentation on the history of anything. Some kid did the history of furries. He came to class wearing his fursuit. Honestly, Kids got guts. I respect him for that. Story 28. I teach 8th grade. The student had talked to me previously in private about how the girl he liked was in my class the same period he was. He said that they had almost dated when they were both at their previous school before transferring to the one where I teach. On top of that, all the other students were aware that he had a major crush on this girl. So one day, he finished his classwork early and apparently he just couldn't take the hormones raging inside of him anymore. He blurts out loud enough for everyone in class to hear. Look, girl's name, are you going to date me or what? I pretend to work through this while cringing so hard on the inside. I see every other student in the room work through this, from shock to laughter, to pure amazement and curiosity as to both why he would choose this moment and what on earth her response would be. The girl very politely said, I'm just not looking for a relationship right now. Thanks for asking, though. Story 29. 
had a kid who legitimately believed he was a Sith, like from Star Wars. His helicopter mom would come flying down to the school crying, religious discrimination. If you told him otherwise, he would relax his throat and talk in a deep voice and say it was his real voice. But he disguised his voice to not scare his human brethren. On free dress days, he'd wear an all denim outfit with high waters and denim vest over a denim shirt. I had him for science, so he blurred out things about alchemy from an anime he was into whenever we were working with the periodic table. He also had a girlfriend who lived in Mexico, who was also his cousin. Humankind can gain anything without first giving something in return. To obtain something of equal value must be lost. That is alchemy first law of equivalent exchange. Story 30 not a teacher, but in 7th grade biology, we dissected drats, and the teacher warned that they might be juicy from preservatives. So I grabbed my dead drat, turned it over in the air, and shouted, got to squeeze the pudding out of it. My lab mate fainted as brown juice poured onto the table. I'm now an adult biologist who does not do quite the same stuff, scratch their butt with a ruler inside their pants, and then put the ruler back into the container of rulers. Story 31 not a teacher, but an intern with one recently. Apart from the kid who insisted on being called Frisk under tail, I guess. But the craze had died down, so it was just weird. There was one girl who wore a cat your headband. Kind of cute, since they were the metal silhouette type that kids wear. But she paired it with the freaking cat tail, a big black and white free cat tail. Story 32 not a teacher, but when I was in school, those track pants with snaps down the side are popular. The boys would try to yank the pants off each other during class changes, and they all wore basketball shorts underneath. One day, some guy thought it would be funny to rip off a girl's track pants. However, she didn't have shorts on, bright purple undies on show, and the look of tear on that boy's face was hilarious. She just ran off and a friend followed with her pants. Story 33 just finished my first year of teaching middle school. I had one particular student who did not view me as an authority and refused to work in my class. This was especially concerning because the student was placed in an advanced class and chose not to learn purely because of who the teacher was. This also meant that the student's classmates were well behaved gifted students. One day, while the whole class was completing an assignment, this student was not working. When I addressed the issue, the student threw a fit and started crawling around on the floor underneath the other students' desks. Now, I don't know when you've last been in a middle school classroom, but the floor is absolutely filthy. This student thoroughly embarrassed themselves, as was evident by the looks received from the other students. The whole situation was extremely awkward for everyone, especially when the student realized that they would get no support from the other students. Story 34 Kid in a fedora, offering high fives in the hallway, but then dabbing just before the other person's hand made contact. It was supposed to be a prank for a vlog. Story 35. I had a couple of Markiplier fan girls a couple of years ago that just gave me the heebie-jeebies. A group of about 20 kids that run up and down the hall shouting about memes, one of which, when asked what he did over the weekend, started with, so do you know the, while making Earth Day posters, one kid tried to disguise pot leaves as palm trees. There were several, I love trees on it. Earth Day was on for 20 seconds, so he also wrote the first two, with the swirl at the end, so that it looked like he'd written four twentieths, but it just looks like for 200 seconds. I probably should keep a list, but they happen so often that I don't think I'd ever be able to keep up with it. Story 36 what are my mother's students took a whole pizza in the box out of our office and just started eating. When told to stop and put it back, he licked the rest of the pizza and asked if he could have it. She said no and told him to throw it away. He started arguing that it was better in his stomach than in the trash. My mom was furious. Story 37 not a teacher, but I had a classmate on a field trip rub mud all over his clothes and body so we could go home. Turns out his mom's car broke down and she couldn't pick him up. He had to wear his muddy clothes for the rest of the trip. Story 38 my friend and I got busted on day one of 8th grade social studies, passing a crude drawing of a classmate of ours, getting pleasured by two well-endowed men wearing party hats. I didn't think the teacher looked at it until I got summoned to the office. During next period, the principal unfolded the drawing and says to us, Can you boys explain to me what this is? I knew I was screwed. My friend reaches over the desk and grabs it. 
holds it close to his face like he's scrutinizing it, and says to the principal, it looks like a picture of classmate being pleasured with two large men, and I think the wearing party hats. I freaking lost it. My friend got expelled midway through that year for threatening to kill the principal during my class. What is it with these stories and taking such wild turns? I swear, why can't middle schoolers just be normal for five minutes? Story 39 not a teacher, but an illiterate girl, was doing a presentation on the country of Nigeria. Yeah, I think you guys can guess how she pronounced it. Story 40. Not a teacher. Sorry to be that person. In middle school, my friends and I were not in the popular crowd, but one of my friends had a huge crush on the most popular boy in school who was also a major jerk. So one day she brought him a bouquet of flowers and a heart-shaped box of chocolates. She brought the gift to him before school, where he and his crappy friends hung out and asked him to be her boyfriend. I happened to be nearby and witnessed the whole thing. They laughed and laughed at her until she ran away crying. Despite riding the same bus as her, I never saw her again. That that school year, I saw her that summer since she lived nearby and she told me she transferred schools because of the incident. Bo girl was brave enough to give it a shot just to be literally laughed out of the school. Story 41 I taught fifth grade recorder class as part of general music, so every kid had to play them for quarter. It was freaking awful. 15 to 20 kids, half of whom were budding criminals, playing out of tune on plastic recorders. I was in the middle of chewing them out yet again. What I heard what sounded like a sneeze combined with the squeak. I look over and the dumpiest, funkiest boy in the class, the gross kid, if you will, had sneezed with this recorder in his mouth and proceeded to blow clear, snot through it and onto his fingers. He sat there for like 15 seconds dumbfounded, with that orange clear plastic recorder just hanging out of his mouth. Finally, I told him to just put it on the table. A few minutes later, I accidentally knocked it on the floor, and it broke, justifying my throwing it away. After class, I bought a new one at the 99 cent store, because I was not giving that stupid thing to anyone else. Story 42 not a teacher, but was a student. One of my classmates had a history of presentation. He screamed at the top of his lungs, Leroy Jenkins. Nobody had any freaking clue what that meant. Everyone was staring at him while he was just smiling, scanning the room, and slowly started to realize no one knew what he said. The smile quickly went away, and he began his presentation. Story 43 to 8th grade. Boys invented their own language, which involved anime like giggling. Funny thing, these two were jocks with decent social status. We had so many parent meetings about how their sins giggling was disruptive in class. The parents were mortified, but the boys wouldn't stop. Story 44. I was showing a movie once, and this girl and boy were sitting in the back next to each other in a table where two people could sit. Anyways, by the middle of the movie, I see. The kid has his two hands on the table, and he is looking away with his eyes wide open while the girl has her hands under the table and is slightly moving. I knew right there, and then she was rubbing him. I went discreetly and stood behind them, just to confirm, and yes, she was. When I tapped her on the shoulder, I guess it was the adrenaline he finished in her hands. The two students in front of them saw everything happen. There were news for about two weeks, and the entire school knew they were in high school now, and still dating. A rare happy ending for this. Story 45. I'm a male teacher. I once confiscated a note being passed between 6th grade girls. It turned out it was a list and they ranked all the boys in the grade in terms of attractiveness. I didn't really look at it, but later I showed it to my team and they pointed out that my name was number 4 on the list. Story 46. When I was in middle school, we had this dress as an animal day, and all the other kids did stuff like wear a king hat or cat ears. But I was different. I decided to go in a skin tight, how to tame your dragon costume. And the worst part about it was that the yearbook committee dedicated an entire freaking page to me in that crappy costume. Story 47 I was a volunteer lifeguard at a middle school gym for part of the year. This school also has a swimming month and the gym classes where students must wear bathing suits but are ordered via financial aid at the uniform store. There was a highly overweight girl at one of the classes and she didn't seem to be aware of the standard issue bathing suits. The gym teachers sent home reminders the week before, but I guess you forgot. This girl was picked on a lot in general and always kept to herself. She was very shy. She never spoke. If you called on her to answer a question in front of the class, she would get teary. On the first day, the other students showed up wearing the uniform bathing suits, but she was wearing her bathing suit from home. It also wasn't a particularly pretty bathing suit, as it looked very old ladyish and had a bright orange Hawaiian shirt type of pattern. She stuck out.
which you could see in her body language, really bothered her. The gym teacher ended up calling her out in front of the whole class, giving her a lecture and giving her a detention for not wearing her uniform because that was the rule. Her face turned bright red and she just stood there silently while other kids stared at her and giggled. You could tell that she wanted to cry and that her soul had just crumbled. The lecture went on for a very long time. This was a gym teacher who didn't like it when the students would disobey the rules. I was sitting off to the side of raining my hands and bouncing my knee in second-hand embarrassment. I wish she had just read the reminder. Oh, sweet child, always read the reminders.